Привет всем! I'm currently in Moscow visiting my parents, and this is the view from their apartment. But let us now shortly focus on that curious group. Let me zoom in a little bit. Much better. Well, if you're on my channel, then perhaps you already recognize the symbol of the Boss Film Studios, sans the Kremlin in the background. In reality, all three of these objects are set wide apart and come together only on the Moss Films logo, Cinema Magic in Action. The statue is 24 and a half meters high, is named the worker and the colhouse woman, and became the symbol of the largest film studio in the USSR in 1949. But it was actually made in 1937 by Vera Muhina to serve as a crowning feature of the USSR pavilion at the World Fair in Paris. There, the Soviet pavilion had an obvious face off with the one of the Nazi Germany. I think this image is symbolic on so many levels. The original pavilion by Boris Eafan didn't survive. Only the statue was brought here and used to reside on a much lower podium. Only recently they added an exhibition space that vaguely resembles the original and put the pair on the intended height. And now I will switch the architect's mode full on and point out two more pavilions behind this one. This is the territory of the Baden Ha, which in Soviet times used to be something like a world expo, but for internal use, a showcase of Soviet Republic's best achievements. And nowadays it is something between an ethno park and an amusement park, and a nice place to check out if you ever visit Moscow. This pavilion traveled here a long way from Canada, where it represented USSR at the World Expo in Montreal in 1967. As for this one, I actually helped design it. I cannot say I'm proud of it, I think it's rather ugly, but I was an intern and had to do what I was told, and I worked on its facade, side plan and cross sections. More curiosities on the other side of the Avenue of Peace, and yes, it's a little Jeepney. Just let's zoom in a little bit. These two buildings make quite a contrast. Why being built just 10 years apart from one another? This one is an example of the late Stalin's empire style, while this one implemented the modernistic ideas of Le Corbusier and cutting edge technologies. We call it house on legs. Okay, now architect mode off and let's get back to movie stuff. And the next cinematic hotspot is right around the corner. Firstly, the street bears the name of Sergei Eisenstein, the famous director of the Battleship Potemkin movie and many others, the visionary father of the modern cinema. Secondly, the street houses another famous film studio, named after the writer Maxim Gorky. Funny how it is much older and closer to the statue, yet others use it as their logo. The Gorky studio used to produce films exclusively for younger audiences, but have diversified since then. By the way, the studio also has an official YouTube channel with lots of free content. I'll link it in the description. And last but not least, here is the oldest and one of the most prestigious film schools in Russia, the Vik. Were we here during the summer months, when the notoriously tough entrance exams and auditions take place, we would have been witness to some truly dramatic scenes. But now the few lucky ones are safely in, and the autumn semester is in full swing. And here we can meet some of Geek's famous graduates. This is Andrei Tarkovsky, whose name must be familiar for any cinema lover. Then it's Gennady Shpalikov, who my watchers have already met as a talented screenwriter for I Walk Across Moscow. He was an actor too, but his life was tragically short. And this is Vasily Shukshin, a writer, a screenwriter, an actor, and a director. But to my shame, I know very little of his works, and none of his films ring a bell. But if they do for you, then please relieve me of my ignorance in the comments. And here I bid you farewell. I'm currently hard at work on the Garage Film Explanation and plan to release it at the beginning of December. Hope to see you then. Bye!